Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the fifth video in this video series about fetal echogenic bubble. There is a synonym for echogenic bubble and it's echogenic small intestine. On second trimester ultrasound imaging, the fetal liver, lung, bowel, and bone demonstrate increasing echogenicity in that order. The new high-frequency generation of transducers offers improved resolution and thereby enhanced prenatal diagnosis. They also make the disparity in echogenicity between small intestine and liver more conspicuous, thereby making the diagnosis of echogenic bowel more difficult. In this ultrasound image, by using a 9 MHz transducer, the setting were deliberately manipulated to give the intestine an abnormal appearance such that, as a result of artifact, the echogenicity of bowel is as bright as iliac bone. According to this study, by using the 8 MHz frequency, the radiologists interpreted 31% of the cases as having echogenic bowel, whereas by using the 5 MHz frequency, the radiologists interpreted only 3% of the cases as having echogenic bowel. For these reasons, it's now recommended that when echogenic small intestine is suspected, these items and technical points should be down. The first one, a low frequency transducer should be used, tissue harmonic imaging and compound imaging should also be switched off. This image was taken from a 19 weeks fetus with the tissue harmonic imaging was on, and as you can see, the small intestine seems to be echogenic in comparison with the liver. But when I turned off the harmonic imaging, the echogenicity of bowel is equal to the liver. And the third technical point is, some authors suggest that the gain be turned down to a low for comparison between the echogenicity of small intestine and bone. Despite these caveats, the detection of echogenic small intestine remains very subjective more than most other sonographic observations. In this study, these images were showed to the sonographers, and 8 of 10 sonographers report echogenic bowel and 4 not and they conclude that the intra and inter-observer interpretation discrepancies indicated in this study highlight the difficulties associated with the observer interpretation of the echogenicity of fetal bowel compared to bone. And finally, they believe that echogenic bowel as a marker for fetal pathology has become incorporated into anomaly scanning with little attention paid either to how it is defined or its clinical significance. There are no standardized criteria for sonographic diagnosis of echogenic small intestine. In this study, named fetal echogenic bowel a complex scenario, they conclude that fetal echogenic bowel should not be considered a distinct diagnosis but rather an ultrasound marker associated with a number of fetal complications. A 2011 review states that the prevalence of echogenic small intestine in routine second trimester sonograms ranges from 0.2 to 1.8 percent. This ninefold range in prevalence attests to the subjectivity of this finding. Also, a sonographic grading system exists to assess the degree of echogenicity, although this is not commonly used in clinical practice. Grade 0 means the bowel is echoic to liver, in grade 1 mildly hyperechoic to the liver or less than bone, Grade 2, moderately hyperechoic compared to the liver or as echogenic as bone, and grade 3, markedly hyperechoic compared to the liver or greater than bone. 
Is there a differential diagnosis for echogenic bowel? Yes, really falsely increased bowel echogenicity due to a high transducer frequency, especially when 8 MHz is used instead of 5 MHz transducer could be considered as a differential diagnosis. And the second in the third trimester, meconium containing bowel may appear echogenic as a normal finding. What is the etiology of echogenic bubble? Echogenic small intestine is thought to be due to abnormal characteristics of intralominal bubble contents or edema of the bubble wall. Factors such as decreased amniotic fluid volume, presence of meconium, intestinal hypomotility because of ischemia, and swallowed blood after intraamniotic bleeding have been associated with echogenic bowel. May echogenic bowel with associate with adverse outcome? Yes, the first one is Down syndrome, cystic fibrosis, congenital infection, fetal growth restriction and stillbirth, and gastrointestinal obstruction. The first one is Down syndrome. Down syndrome, according to a large meta-analysis owning in part to the subjective nature of echogenic bubble likelihood ratio values as disparate as 1.7 and 5.5 to 6.7 have been cited in this meta-analysis. The second one is cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis has been detected in about 8% of fetuses with echogenic small intestine. In some cases, sequencing of the cystic fibrosis transmembrane receptor gene may be helpful in patients with echogenic fetal bowel and normal cystic fibrosis screening results. The another adverse outcome is congenital infection. Congenital infection, or TORCH, According to this study, there were reported to be sonographic findings in 30 of 69 cases of congenital cytomegalovirus infection, including nine cases of echogenic small intestine. They report among the abnormalities encountered in our infected fetuses, it's difficult to pinpoint ultrasound features pathogenic for CMV infection but hyperechogenic bowel and ventriculomegaly are the most common abnormal findings, but they are also seen in uninfected fetuses. Another adverse outcome is fetal growth restriction and still births. In this study, the likelihood of fetal demise and of fetal growth restriction was increased by a factor of 9.6 and 2.1 respectively in fetuses with echogenic small intestine. According to many studies, the median gestational age at fetal demise was 24 weeks and all spontaneous fetal losses that were observed in the setting of isolated echogenic small intestine occurred at or before 30 weeks. Additional factors that may further increase the likelihood of obstetric complications in fetuses with echogenic small intestine include elevated maternal serum alpha fetoprotein and abnormal uterine artery doppler with a main pulsatility index of more than or equal 1.35. Echogenic small intestine is rarely associated with other abnormalities such as alpha thalassemia and intestinal obstruction. Let us to see a teaching case. This ultrasound image of a 19 weeks fetus shows typical sonographic appearance of echogenic fetal bowel. At follow-up examination, a slightly dilated loop of a small bowel with an echogenic rim is shown. At 23 weeks, a heterogeneous intra-abdominal cystic structure with echogenic margins was noted indicating a meconium pseudocyst. And 
progressive dilatation of fluid filled small bowel segments was observed on serial obstetrotic sinograms. This is the appearance at 37 weeks. Immediately after birth, the child underwent resection of 27 cm of small bowel, but after it, she doing well without nutritional deficiencies. What can we do for management of isolated echogenic small intestine? The first one targeted sonographic evaluation of fetal anatomy, including search for other markers of onoploidy or evidence of congenital cytomegalovirus infection to ensure that the echogenic small intestine is indeed an isolated finding. The second one, evaluation of a prior risk of anoploidy based on maternal age and previously obtained screening results. If the patient desires additional prenatal testing for anoploidy can be offered. Given that the increased risk of anoploidy is relatively modest and is mainly limited to trisomy 21, cell-free DNA testing is a useful option to consider in this setting. Now, three, evaluation of the prior risk of cystic fibrosis based on parenteral ethnicity and previously obtained carrier screening for CFTR mutations, which should be offered if not previously obtained. Even if the mother screened negative, there is a residual risk that she is carrier and that the fetus could be affected. If the prospective parents wish to address this concern, the next step would be to obtain blood from the father of the fetus for carrier screening and if he tests positive, one or both parents could perceive gene sequencing, which can detect mutations not identified through genotyping panels and for evaluation for congenital infection with maternal serologic tests. Blood is routinely drawn to test for CMV antibodies, IgG, and IgM. Unless there are specific concerns, serologic tests for other infections such as toxoplasmosis may not be warranted. If the maternal serologic tests indicate evidence of acute infection, further evaluation such as amniocentesis or cytomegalovirus RNA using PCR or polymerase chain reaction should be offered. Why we must evaluate fetal surveillance in the second half of pregnancy. This typically entails serial ultrasound examination often every four weeks to assess growth and amniotic fluid volume. Many institutions also institute weekly or bi-weekly non-stress tests or biophysical profile after 32 weeks. Follow-up sonograms will detect most cases with bowel complications. As a rule, providers taking care of the newborn should always be apprised of antenatal sonographic findings. If the child appears well, no further evaluation is necessary after an in utero finding of isolated echogenic small intestine. According to this study, follow-up of 48 such infants demonstrated a normal outcome. And now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Always pay attention to the technical points before diagnosing echogenic bowel. You must use a low-frequency transducer, switch off the tissue harmony imaging and compound imaging, turn down the gain to allow for a comparison with the echogenicity of a small intestine and bone. Always keep in mind the detection of echogenic small intestine remains very subjective more than most other sonographic observations. A sonographic grading system exists to assess the degree of echogenicity, also this is not commonly used in clinical practice. In the third trimester, meconium-containing bowel may appear echogenic as a normal finding. Association with adverse outcome shows many variations in different studies. Serial ultrasound examination often every four weeks is very important in follow-up. Now I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter.
and thank you for your attention.